morning everybody happy thursday june 4th it's our 53rd day of distance learning and we're almost at the end of our 11th week and we're almost at the end of our last full week because next week we're out on thursday anyway in the backwards alphabet the letter is f for field trip and i'm going to take a field trip later and we're going to have some fun but before we go let's get some learning done Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to do our letter F, which is a review for you. Straight down, lift, go across, go across. And remember, you're going across at the top and across at the dotted line. Straight line, across and across. Give yourself enough space between letters that they don't touch and that you don't think they're all one big thing. Make your lines straight. Do not make them at the diagonal. Kind of looks like my F is falling over there. Make sure that your lines touch. Don't make breaks between them. You want them to go all the way and touch. And as always, if you don't think you can fit it in, go to the next line. Don't leave your F hanging in the middle of the air. You want it to go all the way down. You know, the usual stuff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like I need one more. Okay, so I'm going to go down, across, across, and my capitals are done. Now I like the lowercase ones because to me it's like drawing a candy cane. All the way down and around. Okay, you go, excuse me. You go up, over, and down, and then put a cross up, over, and down, and then put a cross. Up, over, and down. 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 Let's see if I got 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I keep looking out and getting just 9. Up, over, and down, 10. There's our letters, capital and lowercase f's, and now it's time for calendar. Here we are at calendar. Do you know what month we're in? Let's look at the sounds all the letters make. J, J, U. U makes two sounds. It makes U and it makes U. Uh. N, N. And E makes two sounds, and it also has another special role that I'm gonna tell you about right now. E makes the E sound, the eh sound, and sometimes it makes no sound. You're gonna be learning a lot about that in kindergarten. Sometimes the E is a silent letter, and what it's there for is to talk to the other vowel. The E tells the other vowel what sound to make. I'm not gonna give you any more detail than that, but I'm just gonna tell you that for today, we're not gonna look at the E sound because I'm telling you it's silent. And what it does tell this vowel to do is that it tells it to say its own name. So it's not gonna be the U uh sound, it's gonna be the U sound. So let's look at these sounds. J, U, N. And if you don't take the E, because the E is silent, you have J, U, N. Wow, we're starting to see, because we've been practicing our letters and sounds, we're starting to see that those sounds blend together to the words that we say every day. So when you look at June, you now can think j u n June. That those letters say the word June. And next year when you're in kindergarten, you're gonna be learning so many more words and how to say them. And you're gonna find out that all these letters that we've been practicing all year are truly magical. All right, so we've done June and we know our days of the week. I'm gonna skip the days of the week because I wanna to get to our field trip. Now, yesterday our pattern was starting to show. So today I have a question for you. Wave, wave, bucket. Do you think today is going to be a wave, a bucket, or something else? Could be a whole new thing. Wow, I don't know. So I'm gonna take this right here you make your guess. What do you think it's going to be? Here it is. It's a wave. Hey, did we just discover?
discover our pattern? Could be. I'm not sure yet. I want to wait until tomorrow to make sure for absolute positive. Sure, sure, sure. But I have wave, wave, bucket. Wave. What do you think next one's going to be? I think so too. We'll have to wait until tomorrow. All right, super preppies, let's do our counting. Are you ready? One, two, three, four. Oh, so easy. All done. Now we're going to look at what today is. Today is the T and the H. Remember, they make the th sound. Today is Thursday, which means yesterday, the day that already happened, is Wednesday. And tomorrow, the day that hasn't happened yet, is going to be Friday. So let's look at this again. We have today is Thursday, yesterday was Wednesday, and tomorrow will be Friday. Guess what? It's time to check the weather. Today is one of those super duper quick looks because it's so obvious. Let's go inside. I wonder if I'm ever going to get to use my snowy card. Truth be told, I'd be surprised if I ever get to use it. Cloudy, sunny, windy, rainy, and partly cloudy. Believe it or not, the weatherman said we might get some of this pretty soon. I don't know if he's right or not. We'll have to wait and see. But today is definitely a sunny day. So here we go. We have our weather and guess what? It's time for a story. I'm not holding my story yet because today's Thursday and I did not do our estimation job. So today I have some batteries in here and I'll show it to you in many different ways. Um, I truly have no idea, but I know there's not 30. So it's gotta be less than 30. So make your estimation and I'll tell you at the end of the video. Now getting to our story. Today's story is the Berenstein Bears and the Big Red Kite. I love the Berenstein Bears. And this is a course written and illustrated by Stan and Jan Berenstein. Look, Sister Bear, hooray, hooray! The Big Kite Contest is today. Big Kite Contest today. Yes, Brother Bear, I see that's right, but we can't go. We have no kite. No kite? No kite! Now do not worry, I can make one in a hurry. A kite for Sister Bear and me? I'll make a kite, just wait and see. First some sticks, just two will do. Some paper, string, and a little glue. We tie, we cut, now we glue. See, I made a kite for you. A big red kite, and it's a beauty. Big red kite, do your duty. It sure is red, no doubt about it, but will he fly? I really doubt it. For you see, without a tail, that big red kite is sure to fail. This old bed sheet will make a tail. This tail will help the big red to sail. Kite contest, we're on our way. Our big red kite will win the day. Kites, kites, up ahead. Look out, kites, here comes big red. Kites of every size, shape and size, sail and dance across the skies. A box kite, a fox kite, a kite with eyes. Kites that look like butterflies. A dragon with a long green tail. A kite that says, save the whale. The judge looks down his nose at red. It looks homemade, the kite judge says. Other unkind things are said. Too plain, too crude, too heavy, too red. Crude means um, not professionally made, like it, it looks like it's got some rough edges to it. Oh, oh, is that so? It's time to fly. Here we go. Run, Papa, run! Do your stuff! There is some wind, but not enough. We won't give up. We'll keep on trying. Red will soon be up and flying. Ugh, Red doesn't look like he's doing so good yet. Look, Papa, look! The wind grows strong. 
In wind like this, those fa fancy kites will not last long. Look, red flies high and higher still. I know we'll win. I know we will. Oh, I'm looking at the other kites on the ground. Papa Bear was right. They couldn't handle the strong wind and all of them are broken. That wind is strong. That wind is rough. Those other kites weren't strong enough. Big Red has won fair and square. Congratulations, Papa Bear. We won, we won, Mama Bear. Our Big Red Kite won fair and square. You passed a more important test. You didn't quit. You did your best. That's a pretty cool story. I wish we had more wind today. Maybe I'd take a kite out to play. <laughs> now I sound like the Berenstein Bears. I'm rhyming my words. Now it's time for some math. Time for 10 tens. Here's one ten. Two tens, three tens, four tens, five tens, and that's about all I can fit on this line. Remember my usual sayings. One and zero should be close enough together so they look like they belong together, and there should be a big enough space in between the tens so you don't think it's a larger number. One and zero. There's another ten. One and zero. There's another 10. Uh-oh, be careful. Don't have your O's, your zeros float in the air. One and 10. One and zero makes 10, I should say. One and zero makes 10. Pretty sure I have 10 tens here. Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now, Miss Doe has us doing some things in our weekly happenings. She has us writing 10 in pencil, in crayon, in the air, but I wanted to throw an extra one out there. So we're going to go over to my sliding glass door. And we're going to do our numbers in the, on, the, on the board in paint on the sliding glass door. I think I've talked about this once before. I'm going to tell you parents, I did two things wrong today, so don't do what I did wrong. Number one, I forgot to put soap in the paint before I started. Put a little squirt of dishwashing soap in your paint before you start because it'll make cleanup much easier. And two, I forgot to work on the outside. If I'd done this on the outside, I could have taken the garden hose to it and with the soap in the paint, it would mostly come off and I just would have had to scrub a few little patches. But because I didn't do that, I'm not bringing the garden hose into my kitchen. I'm gonna to have to hand clean this later. Still totally possible. Now, for our letter F, we were supposed to do big and small today and I forgot to do it. So I'm gonna be doing big and small F and our number 10 over here on our board where I still have some space. So let's get to painting, guys. You can see I have all the important stuff. I have our numbers, our lowercase letters, our shapes, lots of colors. These are all things we expect preppies to know by the time they enter kindergarten. So let's look at, let's see, I've got my paintbrush. I've got lots of green paint still. So I'm going to make my capital F. which you can also make by going down first and then doing the across, across. And I'm gonna make my lower case, which is the candy cane and a cross. All right, now I have to make my 10. Let's see, I think I'll do it over here. One, zero. Ooh, that's tough to do with a paintbrush all at once. Guys, really spend some time over on your sliding glass door if it's okay with mom and dad and paint up all the things you've ever wanted to paint. This, by the way, parents, if you do put soap in it and you, um, you do it on the inside like I did, it's a great rainy day activity. So if we get some rain later in the week, like they're saying, bust out the sliding door and paint away. Well, today is F for field trip day. So I'm gonna take a field trip around my neighborhood. Can you see my dogs? They're all ready to go. 
they're going on the field trip too. And when we're on the field trip, I have a list of things I'm going to look out for. And when I find them, I'm going to take a picture of them. So here's my list. I'm going to take pictures of an RV, a street sign, a motorcycle, a tree taller than a house, a children's toy, a two-story house. That means there's windows way up on the top where people can walk on more than one story. Um, a pretty flower, a basketball hoop, a dog or any animal. So, uh, let's see, something, what do I have there? Something blue, something green, or something pink. A uh, cloud, that might be difficult today. A word, and a piece of fruit. So keep those in mind when you go out on your walk. Maybe even make a list and see if you can find everything on your field trip. Well, right now, Orange County is requiring its citizens to wear masks when they go out of their home. So since I'm going to be walking around the neighborhood, I'm going to be wearing my mask. But I've got my phone, and I'm ready to take pictures. I've got my dogs, and they're ready to go. So let's go on our field trip. I got my something pink. Let's keep going. Wow, there's a pretty butterfly. Do you guys see it? Hmm, I'm looking for, I think there was a tree bigger than a house. Uh, oh, how about an RV? I see an RV across the street. Maybe I can take a picture of that. All right, dog, stand still. Oh, I see something blue. My neighbor's car. That's perfect. I can take a picture of the blue car. Wow, I've only gone a couple houses and I found a whole bunch of things already. I gotta wait for the dogs. Oh, you know what? The dogs are on grass. That's something green. All right. Come on, guys. Let's keep going. Mm, I think there was one there about a street sign, and I see a street sign coming up. So I'll take a picture of that. Let me get my camera ready. Got my picture of the street sign. Well, I see a whole bunch of things that I can take. If you look behind me, you'll see a tree that is definitely bigger than a house. So I'm gonna take that, and then if you look over here, you'll see a two-story house. So I'm gonna get my pictures. Come on, guys, let's cross the street. Oh, there the cars. They're turning. Let's cross the street. It's where we live. And here's the big, this is probably the second biggest tree in my neighborhood. The biggest one is at my house. Well, let's get a picture of that two-story house. I'm going to find everything on my scavenger hunt, except for maybe a cloud. Hold on just a moment, the dogs have a really good smell. All right, let's get a picture of that two-story house. All righty. I'm still looking for a children's toy. And a flower, I gotta find a flower. Ooh, we see some pretty roses over here. I'm gonna take a picture of one.
got my flower. This really is not that hard to do. Maybe make your scavenger hunt a little longer than mine. Hmm. I better check my list and see what I'm missing. I don't have a motorcycle yet. I still need a children's toy, a basketball hoop, a fruit and a cloud and a motorcycle. the day for cloud. Uh, let's see, a fruit. Maybe some of these trees have fruit. Hmm. When you do your field trip around your neighborhood, make sure you take your dogs if you can. They sure like to get out. I know mine do. I really wasn't expecting to get a motorcycle, but if you look behind me in the driveway, there's someone's motorcycle. All right, I better take a picture of that. So now I'm still looking for a piece of fruit and a basketball hoop. Let's keep looking. I've given up on the cloud, guys. It's not going to happen. All right, come on, guys. Let's go. Well, my son was disputing my two-story house. He said it didn't look like one. So I'll get an extra one just for him. That definitely looks like a two-story house. Here's my picture. Let's keep going. Oh, and if you look down here, I see not one, but two basketball hoops. When I get a little closer, I'm gonna take a picture of one of them. Here we go. I'm gonna take my picture. Got it. Now I'm still looking for fruit. I gotta find a fruit tree somewhere. I hope I can do it. Since I didn't find the cloud, I'd like to be able to find everything except the cloud. Let me check my list and make sure I'm not missing anything. RV motorcycle, got that. Tree bigger than a house. Children's toys. Two story house, pretty flower, basketball hoop, dog. Hmm, suppose I should take a picture of my dog. Got it. Something blue, pink, and green, a cloud, a word, and fruit. I'm not gonna find the cloud, so it's just the fruit. Oh my goodness. I hope someone in my neighborhood can help me on this scavenger hunt. at every tree now guys hmm. lots and lots of trees in my neighborhood hey guys here's a picture I hope my dogs don't see here's a picture of a cat Hello, guys. you my neighborhood has lots of trees but I'm not seeing one with a fruit on it well guys it might not happen but I'm still having fun on my field trip and I hope you're having fun on yours too okay it's time for our last section which is the website and of course our estimation jar on Thursdays so I'm going back to YouTube I know I was there yesterday but I figured since this week we've been studying octopuses in science that you could do some octopus research on YouTube. I have two things that you will like. I have octopus facts for kids, and you wanna look at the one that says homeschool pop. I just found it to be the most um, interesting, intriguing, and age appropriate. 
You can certainly look at the other ones. And then I also found one that is just for pure entertainment. An octopus was put in a jar just like this, and it was tasked with getting out. So if you Google octopus escapes jar, you will be amazed. It's totally cute. So check those out. And now it's time to find out our estimation jar. Do you remember how many batteries you thought were in the jar? Remember, it doesn't have to be 100% correct, but it should be reasonably close. Let's check. My son guessed 13. And I truly don't know, so we'll see now. One, two, three, oh, this is gonna be a loud one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There's my son's estimate, but I still have more. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and that's it. There were 16 in here. I'd say my son gave a pretty good estimate. If yours was 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I'd be pretty proud of you. That's all pretty close. Well guys, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow, and tomorrow is E for exercise day. So make sure you are ready to exercise when you turn on my video.